uh, listen, I make arguments for a living. I'm a professional nerd. But even I don't believe in like convincing people with facts and logic that much. Like that's just not how the human heart works. It, it's it's rare that that works. And I think for most people, if you if you ask them and say, "Hey, have you ever been convinced <laughs> yeah. in that way?" They're gonna immediately realize, "Oh, I I guess not." And and that's not how I arrived at. Uh, you know, I, I didn't read a handbook on the, the precepts of the Catholic Church and go, oh, you know what? This does seem more correct. It was right. some version of what Ian Hersey Ali and Russell Brand and anybody else who's had a, a faith transformation in life has gone through, which is to say, I'm I'm looking for something that I'm not currently getting, and I don't exactly know what that thing is or where to get it. And then eventually it. you find it. And I I think that it's good to find it in the one true God who gave us his incarnate son. And that that's, that's a great starting point. And beyond that, you know, the way that you worship on Sundays, you know, what type of music they play, uh, what, what your favorite books are, whether, you know, you, you like the writings of Peter or Paul Moore, I, you know, Hey, I, I don't think that those are necessarily the main points we need to focus on because you're right. The, the, transformation that our world is flirting with, whether, you know, the metaverse and AI are so antithetical to what our, what our faith is and what our faith says is important. You know, I've been studying, um, Pope John Paul II's the theology of the body recently, which Mm. is based on his writings, uh, and homilies in I think the seventies. And it's so, it, it's so clear what, what makes us human is the relationship of the soul and the body, the mind, mm. the soul and the spirit together, uh, or the mind, the spirit and the body together. And, and we're divorcing that through a lot of modern problems, but that one, that, you know, the AI world that, that is becoming more and more um, a focus in our everyday life. That's the scariest to me because it, it may, it erodes the entire foundation of, of the faith related faith that's gotten us to this point as a society. Yeah, very well put. I mean, the tech stuff to me is at once terrifying and also sort of fascinating. Like it's the most, it's the place where if, if we lived with a more confident church, people would be rushing in to do what used to be called natural theology about this stuff. Like, you know, it used to be that the, the church was deeply engaged, as we started out talking about, the church was deeply engaged with the latest in scientific advances because they were held and understood to carry intimations of God, but also, you know, great import and, and weight and moral consequence for how people lived. And as you say, especially those that touch upon our embodied nature as as human souls, like nothing could be of greater merit and or importance and i kind of feel like as christians as as you know and and what we're hearing from our church leaders is often just like no bad right like don't don't do that and and i i feel that that is insufficient because first of all like don't do what like which technologies are you saying are are awful and which technologies are i mean like i understand that chat gpt is very scary because it can sort of pretend to be a human and might eventually convince people that it's a human but it's just a chatbot right i mean it's just a software basically for predictive very advanced sophisticated predictive text so when we say like don't do ai do we mean don't do predictive text like you know how far back does that go yeah what is ai because it, right. It's a, it's a computer program, <laughs> you know, when, when, right. uh, when the computer, uh, chess program beat a human player back in like what the seventies yeah. at the time that was, oh my gosh, computers going to take over the world immediately. And obviously it right. didn't happen. Um, no, because humans are the point because yeah. nobody wants to see two computers play chess. Nobody wants actually, I mean, you know, there's, it remains to be seen whether people want, for example, to watch a movie that was made exclusively by a computer. But if you do, 
you'll be fundamentally doing a totally different thing than when you watch a movie now. You'll be looking at what what some guy could make a computer do. Like nobody in in their heart of hearts actually cares what the computer can do. We care what people can do with computers. And there is, I think, kind of a white pill that you can take here where you say, yeah, there's a, a hideously dystopian philosophy at work in a lot of these technologies. But there's also a lot of kind of baked in good intuition that people have that our our technology is there to enable and to, in, in some senses, restore us where where we are broken. It's not there to replace us. And the idea that it's there to replace us is really what I think Christians ought to be fighting against, not like chat GPT can talk. And so now it's going to use the aluminum in our bodies to make paper clips. Like, I, I, I think yeah. that's like, you know, and, and if you want to take the position as a business owner that oh, we're not going to use AI and uh, you need to be prepared to go full Amish within the next few years, because <laughs> right. you're right. just not going to be able to compete. <laughs> And you're going to have to apply that logic backwards and ultimately get rid of your computers and get rid of your light bulbs. Like eventually you're going to have to recognize there's no amount of healthy technology because where are you going to draw the line? And if that's based on uh, predictive computing, uh, we we passed that a while back. (laughs) We passed that line a while back. Right. No, it's uh, you, you, I think, put your finger on it when you talk about John Paul's theology of the body. Like it's about our humanity right it's it's not about which technologies we think are satan and which ones aren't like all technologies are both tools of satan and tools of god because they're just tools and so they're you know people have always felt apocalyptic about new tech and they've always had good reason to and been in some ways kind of right and yet there's no safe option here because tech is just an extension of us acting in the world and us acting in the world is what carries that inherently ambivalent moral weight that it can be both good and evil. And ultimately, the reason that's true is because we were endowed with free will, because in order to love God and one another, we have to have free will or else the love isn't real. And in order to have free will, you have to be able to sin. And like you really just chase it back down to the root of like the fall and sin. And, 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 and in the end... What that means is like your problem is spiritual. Your problem is not, in fact, any any one technology, and and like y- you probably need instead to be doing more serious thinking about the kinds of questions you were asking. Like, what is the purpose of this widget making company? Why do you want to make it, and how ultimately does it glorify God, and and therefore bless humanity? What gives you the most optimism that? we are going to actually start going that way as a culture. Boy, I mean, I've talked a little bit about this before. I am neither an optimist nor a pessimist because I think both optimism and pessimism are predictions about the future, which I don't know. But I am a hope supremacist. I am, as they might say online, average hope enjoyer because hope (laughs) is one of the three primary Christian virtues. And I think it's actually a commandment. Like it, it's a necessity that we seek hope and and have hope. And and my hope is in the natural yearning of the human heart for God. That's where I'm placing my hope because a lot of what we've been talking about, from the boardroom up on up to like the you know AI tech stuff, has to do with the fact that you can yell at people you can threaten them you can call them all sorts of nasty names you can even oppress them politically but you cannot stamp out that longing for god in fact often by trying to stamp it out you only make it burn more intensely that's what happened in the soviet union as as the russian people became more and more desperate for the god that they had been denied i just think that like you know when when you tell them when you come to me and tell me that AI is going to usher in the age of Terminator and we're all going to be turned into batteries for our machines. I'm like, maybe I, they definitely want to do that. But also like you're first going to have to convince people that a fake dummy actress made out of code is better than a real life person communicating to you from the depths of her soul. And I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that that's actually not all that 
convincing a sell. Um, reading any articles that have been completely generated by chat GPT, that'll make me pretty optimistic because <laughs> <laughs> along the lines of the, what you're saying is people are going to recognize that it's, it's not really what we wanted, um, right. like cake for breakfast or something. No, it's, it's by definition, it's middle of the road. Yeah. 